I've got to be honest, the topic of tonight's post makes me incredibly uncomfortable. Not because I'm irresponsibly oversharing about my virginity or my menstruation history or something because I've been there, done that. Uh, no, tonight I'm going to be talking about the recent documentary video by Shane Dawson about YouTuber Eugenia Cooney. And the only reason I'm tackling this topic is because so many of you emailed me directly asking me to write about it. So here we go. I want to start out by saying that the reason I'm uncomfortable is because Shane's video is about Eugenia's recovery from an eating disorder. And I feel super gross about making comments or being critical about anyone else's recovery. I equate it to like feeding scrambled eggs to a chicken just for the sick enjoyment of it or something. Um, so I will not be commenting directly about her recovery per se, but rather the documentary video itself. Because spoiler alert, as someone who is in their 12th year of recovery from anorexia, I definitely have some big thoughts about the video. So a few months ago, I published a post called Watching Anorexia on YouTube. And although I did not name outright the YouTuber I was referring to in the post, I was in fact talking about Eugenia Cooney. And to catch anyone up who may not be familiar with who she is, Eugenia is a 25-year-old YouTube personality that has been causing waves for the last several years because she is so severely, visibly anorexic. There was outrage in the online community begging YouTube to take down her channel because her image was so harmful and triggering and just a bad influence for young girls. And I, for one, was one of those in favor of pulling her channel. Um, but recently, in the last few months, she has, you know, truly praise God, begun her recovery journey. And I say begun because that's exactly where she's at. She is at the beginning of a lifelong journey. And for that, I am I am truly so elated for her that she is reclaiming her life and I pray for strength and perseverance for her as she begins this trying road. She went to inpatient for 30 days and in the three month interim since then, YouTube mega star Shane Dawson created an in-depth documentary about her, complete with a post-inpatient interview with Eugenia herself, titled, titled The Return of Eugenia Cooney. And it was released last week and since then has garnered over 25 million views. Yes, you heard that right, 25 million views. And I have contributed two of those 25 million views. So why did I watch it twice? Well, because after the first watch, I left the viewing experience feeling so unsettled, feeling just so icky. I mean, there was something about the whole experience that didn't sit right in my heart. So I watched it again. And this time I could put my finger on why. It was because it glamorized anorexia. It put a pretty filter on it and completely trivialized the living hell that it actually entails. I'm sorry, but doing a house tour and a makeup tutorial with Eugenia and then Shane making light of wanting to go to an inpatient treatment facility so he could unplug from his cell phone and eat pancakes and fries every day, it just left me shaking my head going, what the literal fudge? I mean, yes, I applaud Shane for wanting to bring light to this important and difficult topic, which, you know, with 25 million views, he certainly succeeded in that. But if he was truly trying to educate people on how to help or how to talk to loved ones about it, or just frankly inform people about anorexia, 
He completely missed the mark. He failed utterly. His approach, in my opinion, was all wrong. The way in which he interacted with Eugenia, someone who was only in their fourth month of recovery and still has probably 25 pounds to gain, if I'm guessing, based on where I was four months in. It was just completely detrimental. You know, he was asking her about what she was eating, asking her if she recognizes her changing body in the mirror, you know, asking her about a day in the life of her eating disorder. I just, I cannot begin to express how those questions cause immeasurable anxiety for someone in such a fragile state. Eugenia, God bless her, she answered with a smile and gosh, I just saw so much of myself in her. When I was four months in, I was hanging on to that smile for dear life. I was petrified of the new life that I had been forced to adopt. And no shocker here, I relapsed hard at college. But the biggest thing that I felt sick about after watching the documentary was how nonchalant and dare I say, romantically, they presented such a dangerously and potentially fatal mental illness. First of all, Throughout the entire documentary, Shane gratuitously included clips from her YouTube videos that fetishized her gaunt, emaciated, and truly skeletal body. I mean, after the 15th video insert, I was like, enough already with the skeleton thinspo porn. I mean, and then add to that the fact that the first five minutes were videos from her subscribers begging her not to die and to get better and they were crying and just so dramatic, which sends the message to anyone struggling that, oh, look at all the attention you'll get when you get this dangerously sick. <sighs> and, and then not to mention the triggering images of a glamorous and deathly ill young woman. Anorexia is not glamorous, and it is not at all how it was presented in the documentary. This is a quote from Eugenia, quote, I was still like eating every day, but I guess it just wasn't really that much, which for me, I guess I just kind of wasn't really realizing that I should have been eating more, end quote. I mean, that's actually what she said about it. And I'm sorry, but that is not an accurate depiction of anorexia because you know damn well every single morsel of food that passes your lips. And in fact, <laughs> I can still tell you exactly what and exactly when I ate every day back in 2007 because those rigid food rules were strangling my life so much. Anorexia is not just not realizing you're not eating enough. It is a strangulation of mind, body, and spirit by a force that you cannot overcome. Adding to the inaccurate glamorization of the documentary was the way her story of inpatient treatment was told. It was presented in a way that led us to believe that one day she just woke up and realized that it would be a quote, good idea to get some help. Which, this is such a diminishment of that incredibly difficult and painful decision to seek treatment for an eating disorder. And plus, this is not actually what happened with Eugenia. It is reported that her friends were so worried about her dying that they staged an intervention. Eugenia being a legal adult, 25, was refusing treatment and her mother was allegedly not interested in her getting help, which her mother is a completely separate topic of grave concern. But her three friends ended up staging an intervention with psychiatric professionals who 5150'd her, meaning that she was involuntarily committed to a psychiatric treatment facility as a danger to herself. She went involuntarily, which Sounds a lot like my own story. 
my family had to stage an intervention as I too was 18 and legally an adult and refusing to go to treatment. I did not have to be 5150, but to say that there was a struggle would be the understatement of a century. And on top of all of that, the documentary literally offered zero information on the harmful effects of anorexia on the body other than hair loss, which Eugenia claims she didn't have. I mean, where were the talks of early onset osteoporosis or the intense cardiac stress that can often lead to heart attack or death? Where was the information about infertility and loss of menstruation or the digestive issues or the bone loss or the diminished brain function or growth of fine body hair on the face? I mean, where were those, Shane? No, we were made to believe that poof, after just 30 days at a Four Seasons Resort-like inpatient facility, you can be completely healed and recovered from a severe eating disorder that you've had for over a decade. All smiles here. <laughs> Next, she is not, quote, recovered. I mean, this is not meant to be mean, this is fact. She is beginning recovery. Recovery is a lifelong journey, life long. I am in the 12th year of my recovery and every day you still have to wake up and choose life. So all of the comments on the video praising her that she's recovered and so healthy and et cetera, et cetera, it is so incredibly damaging for Eugenia to read because here's the thing. People who have never suffered from an eating disorder just cannot understand how a person in recovery or with an eating disorder thinks. I remember my first night back from inpatient, I saw a bunch of my friends and loved ones and they were all saying how healthy I looked and how they were so proud of me and how happy they were that I was better. And this is so problematic because of twofold. A. I would hear you look healthy and my mind would translate that to you look fat. And B, secondly, and most detrimentally, coming home from inpatient, yes, I had gained weight, but I still had about 15 to 20 pounds more to go. I entered inpatient at 78 pounds. So yeah, coming home, even though I was still underweight, I looked so much healthier than that emaciated skeleton that left three months prior. And let me tell you, I was terrified of those last 15 pounds. So when I heard those people say how great I looked or how healthy I looked, in my still Ed possessed mind, I was rationalizing in my head saying, Oh, hey, you don't need to gain those last 20 pounds. You're fine now. The inpatient doctors were wrong. This underweight existence is far enough. And Eugenia is in that same boat. She is still dangerously underweight. And I can only imagine what those hundreds of thousands of comments must be doing to her psyche. Other things that just gave me the gooks about the video were how her lawyer was lurking in every scene. How she was still wearing baggy clothes, which was my biggest tell that I was actively in my disease. And also the talk about her mother, who I really hate to say things like this, but I just don't feel settled about their relationship. Her mother, was helping her film all those videos. And she'd even be in some of them. And this is petty, but it was just so shocking to see her mother, who's significantly overweight, next to Eugenia, who if I had to guess was around 75 pounds tops. And I'm sad to raise the question, but was her mother profiting from her visibly dying daughter's eating disorder? Millions of people were watching her videos for the shock value, to fetishize her anorexia. Millions of views equates to millions 
of dollars. And I mean, this is all just gross speculation, but there's just something unsettling about the whole dang thing. This entire reflection video has made me feeling quite sad. Sure, because of what I just watched in Shane's video, but mainly because I really don't like being critical. Because the fact is, Eugenia is a brave, strong, and resilient young woman who is in the fight of her life. Those first months of recovery are terrifying and she is navigating those tumultuous waters, not only in what appears to be a non-supportive environment at home, but in front of millions of people on YouTube. So Eugenia, you go girl, keep at it, brave warrior. She is reclaiming her life and recovery, no matter who you are, is a bumpy ride. And there will be some good days, but there are also a lot of bad days and a lot of days where you're ready to just throw in the towel and revert back to your disease. People with anorexia are all really good at acting. We are all really good at presenting a smile to the world while the inside is absolutely combusting. And I just couldn't help but think about that as I watched Shane Dawson tell the world that this bubbly, beautiful girl is all better and recovered. I want the world for Eugenia. Ever since I wrote that piece those months ago, I have continued to pray for her and her recovery every day. And praise God, it appears that she is making progress. And truly, I am so proud of her for that hard, life-changing work that she's put in. You know, I wanted to hug her throughout that entire video and just tell her that it's okay to be a bit of a mess right now. Recovery is messy. And the sooner you realize that, and embrace that, the more grace you'll be able to give yourself and the more free you'll be. You know, at the end of the day, all we can do is be there for one another and love and support each other to the best of our abilities. My feelings about this documentary are truly from a place of love, but admittedly, from a place of trepidation. Because though well-meaning, I'm afraid that this video did more harm than good. And in fact, is not the best way to support this brave warrior on her early journey of recovery. So, if you've made it to the end, thank you for watching. And if you are in recovery, stay strong my brave warriors. Recovery is worth it. Life is worth it. And there is always hope for a future free from it.